All the little critters like mice, chipmunks, moles and voles, and skunks are storing up for the winter. Bigger pests like deer, they have something else to do during the winter. <laughs> yeah, deer are thinking definitely of something else. It's the rut. The rut starts in the fall, and, and uh, deer deer can be a big pest. All right, but let's start with skunks, little stinkers. They are around. Uh, Aaron and I, we were talking on the way in. Aaron <laughs> said he had caught a skunk, or had your wife caught a skunk? Saw the skunk trying to climb up your... So, my wife pulled in at like 4 in the morning, and uh, she caught... Where was she? Yeah, I, I don't know. She's <laughs> coming back in. Um, right. We'll talk just, about it on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> she, pulled, she pulled in and uh, said that there was skunks outside underneath the, um, underneath the bird feeder, and they were climbing the bird feeder, trying to get seed, yeah. which was crazy because I had no idea uh, that... You know, skunks could climb, number one. <laughs> and that uh, she said that it was they were jumping, trying to climb the pole. And so, yeah, it was crazy because I didn't. Skunks, you know, skunks get so active this time of year because they're trying to build up their fat reserves for winter. Um, and they don't really hibernate, but they, they'll, they'll sleep for a week or two during severe winter weather. But their food sources are, are disappearing. Um, but that's why, like, if you've noticed on your drive home, there's a, there's a lot more skunks that are uh, on the middle of the road, side of the road, right? Yeah. Hey, dude, look who's back. We switched our, we switched our producer. <laughs> How's it going? And TJ's back. <laughs> yeah, it's going good. TJ was nodding an understanding about seeing skunks in the middle of the road. I appreciate that. I love the support. Groundhogs, Julio, uh, your well, groundhog, is he yeah. still around or no? No, he's left. I, I think um, his food sources have left. There you go. <laughs> will you stop feeding your groundhog? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that uh, they will go and eat just about anything. Um, people that have compost piles and they don't have them like in a bin or covered, yeah. they're, they're, they're rooting good. through there trying to find anything to eat. Um, and they do... They, they, They'll, they're just eating, again, to gain weight because they do have a hibernation cycle, which is October. Um, let's see, it begins in October, November, and that they'll eat um, almost two pounds of vegetation a day during the summertime. Uh, and what's interesting is, is you know, you know how that everyone see when the, they pull the groundhog out for, well, we're going to have six more weeks of winter. Yeah, right. The thing looks like it's asleep. Yeah. It is because <laughs> they're hibernating that time, you know. And uh, to me, I'd be scared. Yeah, yeah, the thing scared. turn and bite me. Like, yeah, maybe that's why they have those big hats. <laughs> um, but <laughs> normally, they're going to be they're going to be um, basically uh, hibernating. So, but it's spring. Look out, Julio. That's when they were active in your yard, right? Yeah, uh, hell yeah. They're- yeah, they they're they're not, they're not interested in their shadow until they hit springtime, and then it's mating season. So they become very they're active, active yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and that they'll, you'll see them eat like things, uh, even like clover. It's almost that they become like a instead of eating like large fruits and apples and things like that, that they're they're eating some grasses and such. So I find I find pretty interesting. The one thing there is. Uh, sprays that you can use for uh, all of these things for for both skunks and for groundhogs as repellents and everything that we're going to talk about today there are, there is a repellent but it has to be used uh, regularly. Mice, I, I my cat, I've got oh, two cats. Got, how are, they're how lazy are they? cats. Oh, they're, they're house they cats. They just sit around. I had to sign a paper that said I would not let my cats out when I adopted them. Really, really. Yeah, Tom, I'm so proud. I'm so proud. Tom. Caught a mouse. <laughs> really? I was like, yes, Tom. Uh, Kill it, though. Tom. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> like, just... like Tom and Jerry? Like... No, no. It, it's it's actually Tom. All right. And then Bobby. Oh. And Bobby is, is, a, is actually a girl with an eye. So wait, like, no, no, no. Like Tom and Jerry, like the cartoon? No. The, the cat the and cat. the mouse? Tom, no. Tom, Tom my cat, killed a mouse. 
it. Well, no, he didn't kill he it. He didn't kill it. Okay. He, he played with it. Oh, that's Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> and and that, that I was so proud because, you know, Tom, Tom has, yeah, Tom is the cat that has feline herpes that when we adopted it, we didn't know and they handed it to us and said, oh, yeah. And then you have to take Bobby, too, who has no tail and is a bonded pair. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. Just Tom. Tom sneezes a lot of snot. <laughs> so. But he caught a mouse. So I'll let it go. It's only taken six years. <laughs> it's only taken six years. But they're doing the same thing. They're, you know, all of a sudden there's these nests of these, these mouse. They, they're prolific. And they're going all through your house to try to find or trying to get in. They're, you know, they're looking for Florida. You know, they're saying, <laughs> hey, we're going to the Schroeder's house. I hear it's pretty warm in there. Right, you you know? And those cats don't catch anything. <laughs> 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 so, but, uh, yeah, so we got rid of our mouse. Uh, humanely got rid of our mouse. Sort of, I guess. Um Moles and voles are kind of like the same thing. but And here's one thing to remember about moles with an M and voles with a V. Moles are meat eaters. So they're the ones that are looking for grubs and things inside and around your garden and in your vegetable garden. Voles, on the other hand, they're the ones that are going to be eating roots and such. Uh, that, we don't like voles because they're killing plants. Moles are are maybe disturbing the soil around the roots, but they're not necessarily killing plants. So moles for meat eater, voles for um, for vegetarians. And that you remember that, it helps you on how to treat them. There are plenty of repellents around that actually work. Uh, there are poisons that you can use, but I never like poisons, even with the mouse. Um, yeah, yeah, I, some of my family frowns that I use for traps in the house. I use um, traps and I use, I use the, the glue traps. I'm sorry, they work. I, you know, you know when you got one. Um, you don't clip the old fashioned type trap on your finger. Uh, but as far as moles and poisoning moles or voles, it's up to you. It, it Basically what happens is I'll, we'll watch it with our customers that they finally get so sick of them that they just want to kill them poison and that's what they want so there are ways to to do that uh chickmunks and squirrels oh god i hate squirrels i would put squirrels on glue traps i hate squirrels more than any of of the animals but again it trying to relocate them is probably the best thing uh or using the repellents the repellents work you basically coat their food source with something that is everything from like castor oil and like Aaron said the skunks going after the seed where squirrels as we all know are going to go after chipmunks too uh, but isn't it funny that the chipmunks don't seem to appear until fall but they're doing the same thing they're trying to build up their fat reserves and that there are sprays that you can use that are a capsian pepper that they will not eat it because it's like really it kills their, their, they go and they put it in their mouth and it burns just like it does with us. So again, uh, using repellents first and then you can do have a heart type traps and, and um, move them. But one thing we don't think about are deer. Oof. I, we're here. I never had deer. I never had deer. I All of a sudden the past year, that's a, that one buck that I that sent, I sent a picture to Aaron. He said, it looks yeah. like he just got out of prison. Straight all up. buff. He was like gigantic. Uh, yeah. Solitary and, confinement. Yeah, just like yeah. I was thinking more like Bambi's father. Look. But uh, <laughs> anyway, but I understood the reference that deer are going to, and it's male deer. What they do is, is that it's the rut and that it's mating season. So, you know, it's like, I don't know. It, it, it is time to get it on for the deer. So they're going to go and mark their territory and they take their antlers and they scratch up your tree last year we had a caller who told us what can i do that it looks like all the bark has been ripped off oh, of, yeah. of my red bud and it was because a deer was rubbing its antlers up trying to mark its territory so it it was it wasn't good 
it was no good. And, you know, I'm sorry that, that I have a note here where antlers play an important role in deer society. And, uh, you know, whether it's hunters and they talk about how many points the deer was or how big their rack is, uh, it's uh, it's something where it, it is something for other deer to take notice. So <laughs> you can form your own opinion. Okay. But if you have your trees and there looks like they're being scratched and they look like the bark is being stripped off, that it is deer. Use deer repellents. Um, you going out there and running after them is not a good idea. I'm trying to chase them away. Don't do it, people. Yeah. Please, please now, do it. Aaron, you said you use deer repellent. Yeah, and, I actually and... use Repelzol from our friends at Bonite. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I use Repelzol, and that worked. Um, definitely, it worked wonders. And uh, I would suggest uh, anybody, um, if you want to get rid of them, they were eating my pansies, man. And I was so <laughs> mad. I, like, I literally, I just bought them probably like a, a month later. They were all getting eaten up and so i got it i had enough i had enough nature's pruners absolutely yeah well absolutely don't fear the deer yeah don't <laughs> no fear the no deer. absolutely fear the deer because what they will do is like if you have hostas forget it pansies yeah and that where the again the repels all makes it and it puts a fear of flight in when the deer smell it and they get it their sense it's like oh gotta leave and then they go to your neighbors or go down down the you know the next backyard, and that it keeps them. In. And then they, you you have to reapply, 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 because what happens is that it goes and it it they associate your yard with the bad smell, and the and they don't go to your turf. 